Welcome to my three to five move collage activity that I use to further explain my creative process, uh, specifically connecting to the Everything is a Remix videos of copy, transform, and combine. Just thinking about simple ways that we can take existing materials, uh, cut them up, rearrange them to create new works of art while focusing on new compositional techniques and uh, furthering exploratory uh, play uh, journey type experiences with the arts where students learn to work through that that influence process the inspiration process of of collecting ideas and combining them um, to express themselves so the first thing uh, that we're doing as i said is this is a three to five move collage exercise here are a couple examples of something that is just three to five moves. These are meant to be fast. They're meant to be uh, that you could, if you were in a space that had all of your supplies ready to go and you had a tons of tons of material, you could make um, one to two of these in a day, and you know three three to five over a period of two days. I want students to just kind of like dive in, have fun with this, and not spend too much time thinking about it. Most of the time we just go into to cutting up the materials. So what do you need to begin this project? You need a surface. Um, it's nice to have something that's a little bit harder, like a piece of cardboard. So if you have a piece of cardboard, um, find a piece of cardboard. I recommend cutting it into about an eight and a half by 11 size. Um, but you can really use anything as a background. If you have construction paper lying around, that's really helpful as well. Um, it's a little bit thicker. It'll hold the glue and, and paper a little bit better than just like a regular sheet of paper. But really you can use anything as a surface to collage onto. You're gonna need some scissors. Or if you have um, an X-Acto blade, I prefer an X-Acto blade, but not everybody has access to this. And if you are using an X-Acto blade, make sure you're working on a cutting board of some sort. Don't cut directly on a desk or table. Um, that would be really bad. Um, you're gonna need some glue, stick glue. Any type of adhesive would really work, but uh, stick glue has been provided to you and this is the easiest thing to use. You're going to need some source material. So um, I have a National Geographic. Um, I have a few Time magazines, a few old Time magazines that I've collected. You know, you could use anything. You could use a newspaper. You can use mail that is, that's been collected in your house that you're going to throw away. Um, I also love using things like maps that are lying around. Um, I have this old Chicagoland atlas. Um, and these make really great backgrounds to, to begin collages with as well. So, um... Start searching for materials, collecting them. The number one thing that's going to be a difficulty, actually, is finding a, a cohesive background image, which is really helpful. It's not necessary. I'm going to talk about a couple different types of collages that you can make. But finding uh, an image in a magazine where you have like a nice scene, uh, a nice complete scene that can make a cohesive background for your image. So if I just glue that right on top of the uh, um, cardboard, it would work really well. Um, those are the things you want to collect before you jump in. So the first one we're going to begin today is uh, I'm going to use my piece of cardboard and I found this background in a, um, a state magazine actually for Arizona and um, calendars. If you have some old calendars lying around, they tend to have larger imagery that are, are a little bit more co cohesive, especially if you can find a landscape one that's a great source. Uh, as a background. If you have a, a printer available and you want to print something out to be a little bit as a cohesive background, that's cool too. So I'm going to start with this. Um, I'm going to use this back, this this piece of cardboard, and I'm not going to glue anything at first. You don't want to start off by gluing everything. In fact, you could just pretty much get rid of this. I'm just going to start going through magazines, looking through stuff, rearranging them, cutting them out to see what makes sense to me. Just kind of start playing around a little bit. So let's do that. So I'm going to begin with my National Geographic magazine and I just start flipping through the pages, right? And I'm looking for anything that stands out to me that I might want to use. There's a car. Maybe I could use that car in my, my collage. And, uh, you know, there's a little animal that I could possibly put in. It's a little bit on the large side. Um, and I'm thinking about, remember, three to five moves. So I don't want to go too intense with it. 
there's a footprint that could be you know interesting as a background element uh, and sometimes what I'll do is if I find a page that's interesting I'll just rip it out you know, and I'll put it on the side as an as a possible possible idea um, you know whale I'm looking for something that isn't isn't gonna get caught between the two two sides here's another car that I could potentially use this one has two cars going in different directions so maybe I want to uh, rip that out sometimes I like to check the other side this lizard is interesting as well I might end up using that right so I'm just looking through this is you know finding influence there's a very interesting image uh, of a boy I want to you know stay away from things that might be a little bit uh, so, you know too much of someone else's art you know these two little elf looking children would be an interesting element this big spider would be really great I'm finding a lot of things in here already that I think could be interesting and my brain is starting to formulate some ideas so this is you know collecting inspiration uh, influence you're being influenced by the images that you're finding in these pages and you're just looking for something that might stand out to you ooh uh, where was that that image this would be a really good background image right here uh, to use in a piece um, and maybe I want to switch to using that instead here's another one that would be a really good background image as well as uh, you're thinking about scale the size you know there's a lot of people here that could be used as a background some interesting images here as well um, and what are three to five things that I could collect that would be interesting so I've gone through a few magazines and I've collected some imagery I came across this map of it's basically the protected waterways of the United States and it got me thinking tomorrow's election day maybe I can do something that uh, references the election you know I, I decided that I might want to change my background to going to this in this direction I found this really interesting image of a plane that could be very dynamic and creating some um, great movement and lines that direct the viewer in a different direction so now what I need to do is I need to cut some of these things out to start playing around with and rearranging them specific uh to to that imagery and start seeing what i what i come up with So I've cut a bunch of stuff out. Sometimes if I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not, I'll just cut around it very closely um, so that I don't have to spend time with it. And uh, I can just kind of work it around to see if it fits and whatnot. Um, so this is kind of the space that I was working with. And I'm now starting to think I might go back to that old background that I had here uh, with this imagery instead of this just because of how things are sort of fitting and again I want this to be three to five moves so um, you know after your background just three to five different moves you know each one each placement is a move so we have one two right and then I have room for maybe you know two to three more after that um, I really love the way that that this kind of plays in the background and there's a couple things that I want you to be thinking about while while you're making this. I want you to be thinking about contrast, and I want you to be thinking about lines. So you know this this airplane creates lines. Uh, the white creates contrast. This is a diagonal coming in. You know it draws us to this. But I also want you to be thinking about scale and proximity quite a bit. These are all very big. They're all similar sizes, and having all three of these things together would probably be too much and for one I end up losing the power of the plane if I put this in the background here but if I put the plane on top it also kind of just interrupts this so I'm seeing that this this might not work for this piece right this plane might not work for this piece and that's fine I have it now I can put it aside for a future project so I take that kind of play around with it where do I want to fit this voting you know element here 
I feel like we need something up in this top space, right? So think about composition. I want you to be thinking about what are some of the compositional rules that you're following. So that could be like the golden ratio where I have like something come around this corner, you know, flow around and then curve into here. My focal point would be right about there. How can I, you know, I love, I don't like when things like kind of just break off like this. How can I use other elements to then come into play there? So I have my one, two, three, you know, would this be a good idea of, of being in here, you know, like this kind of a movement going in that direction and to play around with, and maybe I don't even have all of, all of the pieces I want. And then the other thing that I'd also like for you to think about utilizing is uh, like paper to create designs and lines in the piece that possibly like come out. So one of the things I'm thinking is I could do kind of like a, uh, Kind of explosion element coming out from the background over here to kind of suggest like you know to lead into my my little ballot box that's that's happening here the other thing i could think is i could turn my ballot box like sideways like this i can rearrange things so this is like the play element i've gotten my influence right I've collected uh, some inspiration. I'm starting to connect those things. And now I'm starting to innovate. I'm starting to problem solve. I'm starting to think about what do I want to do? And this is really what this project is all about, is this playful element. So I'm going to you know, make some decisions and then let's see where I end up. All right, so I just uh, cut this shape out of this construction paper and I'm going to use it as as a filler, as a way to emphasize a focal point to create contrast and draw direction. Um, so it's fulfilling a bunch of, of uses. Again, it is drawing attention to what is basically going to be my focal point um, with uh, contrast by filling space, right? It's also filling the space and it's also creating a line. So it's adding some, some lines that draw you in uh, to the focal point. So contrast, the pink against the rest of the color, it's the only thing that's like a solid color like that standing out. Um, the lines draw towards my focal point, which I'm placing, you know, trying to place about um, a rule of thirds kind of golden ratio element where I have my corner down here. Um, I've put uh, the top of what looks to be the Capitol building sliding across into this area draws a line into here and then my focal point is up here right and now I have one two three four five moves so this is a three to five move collage um, and now I need to glue it down so let's do that So there you have it. I've made a very quick collage with three to five moves, right? So I have my background. I want to have, you know, as much of a cohesive background as possible that could involve putting together a couple of different elements. So I've combined uh, the, the first few steps of the creative process, right, with influence, looking for inspiration, sifting through my magazines to find elements like a background that influences a lot of where I'm going. I found the image of the United States. I had no intention of making a piece that referenced voting in any kind of way, but because it's the election that stood out to me, I cut it out. I liked how I found a warrior helmet on another page and thought that those two images would fit well together, just kind of the idea of the action that's taking place, like the war within our election that's kind of taking place and how we um, view it as as such. Um, you know, and then I went through a Time magazine hoping to find something that maybe referenced voting and I got very lucky. I found a ballot box. I found an image of, of what looks to be like a Capitol building. Um, I needed a piece to kind of bring it all together. So I ended up adding the uh, purple, you know, pink construction paper, creating like a kind of an explosion element with some leading lines that draw us in to connect this imagery into um, 
the the voting ballot box. So it's really important that that we think about those creative steps, that we think about how we we find influence, we connect, we combine these influences by transforming them into something new, putting the the American image or the United States into the warrior helmet is a is a process of transformation. And then I'm innovating by thinking about how can I create this this imagery in a cohesive way? How can I draw the viewer in a direction? And then I want you to think about those aesthetic uh, vocabulary terms that we've been learning about composition, where I really want to create contrast. I don't want to put a bunch of like red images on top of each other. The white of the United States is really standing out against that red background. So is the ballot box. The pink stands out in a really good way that's not like too overwhelming but draws a lot of attention to it. So I'm using contrast. There's also a lot of harmonious elements in that the warrior helmet has a similar hue to the background so it doesn't stand out like too much. We have, you know, the Capitol building down here stands out a lot, but I'm trying to create balance by having an element down here and then something here. I'm thinking about the golden ratio, how lines move along this curve into this area, and I'm drawing attention to my focal point here by thinking about scale. Um, I'm not making everything the same size. These two things are going together, so I do want them to kind of be the same size, the, the helmet and the United States imagery, but I need some other things that are not the same size. The Capitol building and the ballot box are smaller in scale. How close are they being placed to each other? I wanted a little bit of separation here to kind of create some space so you can see the, the space in between. So you're solving problems when you're innovating, you're solving problems. And you want to you want to draw on the creative process, but you also want to draw on some aesthetic um, you know, visual literacy skills such as composition, the principles of design, thinking about leading lines, which is a really strong compositional element, strong focal points, having something that stands out that draws our viewer, but also having enough interest over here that we we still see the whole piece as a whole. So this is how you you make this three to five piece uh, collage piece, you know, element. I want you to have fun. I want you to play, just kind of go through, experiment. But then I want you to really draw on some of those terms that we've been learning, the principles of design and compositional rules. Think about how color plays a role. Think about how color, proximity, how am I placing things? What is the scale of elements? Think about those terms, and I want you to be able to identify them when you finish your collage. So this is one. Maybe let's try making another quick one using some of the negative space uh, as a background in this, in this, uh, on this construction paper, okay? Let's look at a couple other examples as well, such as this piece here by Melinda Tidwell. You can also go abstract with this. It doesn't have to be kind of representative of actual imagery. You can cut through things. You can combine things in really interesting ways. But this piece is a little bit more abstract. You can also bring textural elements into it, like such as with like the fabric or, or netting here in the corner. Um, make sure that you're thinking about, again, your use of space. Do you have a focal point in the piece? What is your use of color? How does the, the elements move throughout the space, right? How are things placed in compositional elements, which will be more important when you're looking at um, abstract pieces. But also, don't be afraid to use color, such as with this abstract piece by Michael Cutlip. Um, you know, this one again is abstract. There's some close-ups of, of text. Don't be afraid to use text either. And think about how you can create textures with even ripping lines and things like that that you can kind of see throughout the piece. Maybe even splashing a little bit of paint on it if if you want to have a little fun with that. But that here are two really good examples of a three to four move uh, a collage by Sammy Slabink. Um, one of them with a symmetrical approach, very symmetrical. Actually, both are kind of symmetrical with compositional elements, and both utilize. Um, color in a specific way to create contrast with having the black and white imagery on top of a colored background. That's something you should really think about as a way to create contrast. Um, strong focal points in both images with a center image. You know, again, have fun. It doesn't require a lot of moves to make something interesting and unique to really change the original intent of, of the imagery that you're using and to transform it into something new. Here's another quick uh, five move piece that I made using mostly materials that I had already cut out for the previous piece because I had collected about, you know, 10 to 12 things and I only used five, so I had a bunch left over. And really importantly, what I want you to recognize is, is the craftsmanship 
involved in this process is really about how well you cut along your images. So like if you're using scissors, just try to do your best to cut as closely to the lines as possible. Sometimes you wanna leave a little bit of an outline, but this is where the craftsmanship really comes in with this process. And take time to make sure that you cut those things out because a lot of times the elements behind your image can be extremely distracting. Um, if I were to just use this elephant without cutting out along its edges, that grass and everything, these odd shapes that are here, would be distracting on my piece, right? It wouldn't allow us to kind of focus and differentiate between, between objects. And the scale, uh, proximity of those objects is very important. How they stand out, the lines around them, the way that you're using the space. All of those things are, are what you need to consider because in an... In, in action, this is a simple process of just collecting imagery and then combining it in a unique way to transform it into something different. So we have our, our inspiration, our influence, we connect these things, we combine those things, then we innovate, uh, we transform it through innovation, right? And then we get to the little bit of the, the work stage, the prototype where we kind of move things around, try different ideas out. And then we get to the work stage where we really focus on cutting along those edges really well. And in this case, here we have, I wanted to do a different type of compositional approach. I did go for symmetry, so I went for balance. And, and then also the space in the background, it's very just negative space. So it's very positive, negative space. I could take this image, right? This object, it's kind of like one entity in and of itself, how it's combined into this one, you know, larger scale piece, all these different elements coming together to make one. Um, I can move that onto a bunch of different backgrounds and try out different, different backgrounds just by gluing those things together. The, the trick is trying to make those backgrounds as cohesive as possible. And because we're just doing the three to five move exercise, it makes it a little bit easier. So good luck on this. Have fun, experiment, but don't get too crazy. Try to keep things simple. Remember to vary your scale and pay a lot of attention to contrast. What's your focal point? What's your compositional approach? And there you go. We'll see what you do. Good luck.